I went from a bigger room with more treatment and more gear to a smaller room with less treatment and less gear and something weird happened. My mixes started sounding way better. So I spent about 10 years working out of a small project studio. It was a standalone garage that had been converted into a kind of a makeshift studio. It just was divided basically into two rooms, a tracking room and a control room, both pretty small, maybe 10 or 12 feet by 15 feet. And when I started renting this space, it really had no treatment at all. It sounded pretty bad. And over the years, I, I learned more and I, you know, I got better. I started understanding more about treatment. I just slowly, slowly added panels and absorbers and that stuff and, and eventually got it sounding fairly good or at least fairly dead. But that's where I learned the crafts. That's where I spent thousands and thousands of hours figuring out how to record and mix and produce and produced a lot of songs for local bands and eventually for bands like Silverstein, Counterparts, Intervals, uh, Nick Johnston, Den Divine, and mixed a whole bunch of others as well. And mix wise, you know, in the control room, I had a, a lot of treatment. I had a ceiling cloud above me. I had two pairs of monitors. It certainly looked maybe a little fancier than what I have here at home. But as my career progressed, I started transitioning to focus more and more on just taking mix projects and doing less and less recording. And so there came a point where it just didn't make sense for me to keep renting this space and having all of this recording gear when really I was just mixing. I just needed a computer, some monitors, a simple interface. And so I ended up moving out of that space. I sold a lot of my recording gear, really just kept kind of some bare essentials for, you know, if I might need them in the future. And as my career progressed, I started focusing more on mixing projects. I started doing less and less tracking and, and just focused on mixing records. And so I realized at a certain point, it was just a waste to keep renting this space, have all these mics and recording gear. I really just needed a simple room with speakers, and an interface. So I sold a lot of gear, moved out of the space and took my mixing rig home. So I had my Pro Tools system and I had my NS10s and that's pretty much it. And I took some of the, the treatment, the wall panels here, uh, similar to what you see behind me. And I just kind of put those up kind of quickly, roughly in my space at home. And the first mix project I had booked after moving home was mixing Nick Johnston's Remarkably Human record. And going into this project, I was pretty much terrified. I had never really mixed anything seriously in that home space. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to hear things properly just because of, you know, having kids running around downstairs and just a lot more ambient noise in the environment. I could hear like cars on the street uh, a lot louder than at my old space. And the room itself, you know, the size, the shape, the treatment, it was really not ideal compared to what I had before. So I was really worried that it would be a struggle to get the results that you know Nick wanted. But at the end of the day, he ended up loving the mix. Actually, at the time he said it was uh, the best mix that he's ever had on one of his records. I also think it's one of my best to this day. So how is this possible? Why did a far worse environment actually make my mixes better? Well, I think there are a few practical reasons that I discovered from going through this process. One of the reasons I believe my mixes started getting better was because I couldn't hear those tiny details anymore. Like I said, a lot more ambient noise in the house, in the room that I was mixing, um, just from other people in the house or from the street, like I said, it was just that the noise floor was a lot higher. I had a pretty quiet room before. It was really set back from the road and everything. It was kind of a, a country farm property. So there really wasn't any uh, noise around coming into the building uh, compared to the house that I was now mixing at. Uh, there was a lot more noise. So that means all those little tiny details and little noises that kind of bother us and that we put a microscope on and we try to like fix everything microscopically and we go down these rabbit holes for things that probably 99% of listeners will never hear. All of that was just eliminated for me. I was It really helped me and kind of forced me, I didn't really have a choice, but to start looking at it from a higher level, the big picture of the mix, how everything was sounding together. And so I wasn't distracted anymore by quote problems that really weren't problems because no one would hear them. And for that same reason, the higher ambient noise, inability to kind of hear really small, minute details, it forced me to make bigger moves in my mixes. So when it comes to EQ, compression, I found myself just instinctively turning those knobs a little more, hitting the compressor a little harder because I was wanting to hear what I was doing. In this new environment, you know, making a 0.5 dB change was really hard to hear. And so I ended up being a lot more aggressive and in the early days there, I found myself uh, often pushing things too far. I would kind of get close to the end, of the end of the mix and I'd realize it was a little too harsh or a little too bright or I just, I just kind of pushed it a little too hard and then I would dial it back a tiny bit and find the sweet spot. But just being forced to be more aggressive, to actually hear the moves, I think that made my mixes more exciting because that just translates to the end listener. It also makes them hear those moves and it makes it more exciting 
for them to listen to. So that was another big benefit. And lastly, I think it just drives home the point that when it comes to translation, you know, how the mix is gonna hold up outside of your studio, if you're mixing in a more real world environment, then chances are your mix is gonna translate better in the real world. And this new space, my, my home mix room, is much more real world than my old studio was. And so it's really no surprise that my mixes started translating better. I do think it was important that I kept my monitoring the same. So regardless of changing the spaces, and by the way, we've moved uh, two other times since then. So I've had three different home mix rooms and in all of them, uh, I've been totally comfortable with what I'm hearing and how my mixes are translating, but I was always on NS10s. So I still knew those speakers and be just because of their frequency response, because of the fact that they're not pumping out uh, tons of bass and that inherently you kind of mix quietly on them because they don't sound that great turned up loud. Um, it helps it helps minimize the room problems and they kind of just sound the same everywhere. So knowing those monitors, keeping those consistent, even though I was going from place to place, that really helped. So I want you to be encouraged by this, no matter what your situation is. I know for a lot of up and coming engineers, there's an insecurity or a, a worry or fear about their space being the wrong shape or too small or you know, people really stress out that they're not hearing things right and why aren't the mixes translating and, and all this stuff. And I think we can get in our heads a lot, but it really comes down to some pretty straightforward common sense principles. And I'm seeing it over and over again with friends of mine who spend a lot of money on fancy monitors and they end up going back to more, again, real world monitoring and their mixes translate much better. We're also hearing more and more pro engineers and mixers uh, on podcasts and interviews talking about how they're working in those big fancy studios less and less and they're mixing at home and they're traveling and mixing on headphones or small speakers and they're loving it. They're getting the best results of their career. So don't be fooled. Getting more expensive monitors, perfectly measuring and treating your room is not necessarily going to make your mixes better. And in fact, I found the exact opposite. When I went to a less ideal room, less treatment, less gear, simpler interface, less ideal sound environment, my mixes got better because I was forced to ignore the tiny details that actually didn't matter. I was focusing more on the big picture and I was making bigger moves. And because I was mixing in a more real world environment, my mixes translated better in the real world. If you wanna see more about the room treatment that I use, where I put it in the room, why I put it there, also my whole home mix room set up here uh, with my interface, my speakers, everything that I'm using and why, then I've got a studio tour video for you right here. Check it out. I'll talk to you again soon.